Let's clean up your Power BI measures. I've created this report with a whole bunch of measures and stuff is getting a little bit messy. So it's time to clean it up and let's do this together. So as a first step, I want to make sure that all of our measures are consistently named so that everything that refers to the same field shows up right next to each other. Okay, so if you go over here to the FCT forecast table where you see our measures and you see, for example, that everything that relates to revenue shows up as total revenue, forecast, and then whether it's the last year, year on year, etc. So that it nicely shows up together. And then over here for total units have done the same. Now, if you don't do this, for example, here, some units forecast, you see it also refers to the units. However, this one shows it up and then a little bit down the list, we have then again total units, and it's not nice, right? It's much better if it shows up right next to each other. So as a first step, let's take this one, rename it to total units as well. And as soon as you rename it, then you see it also sorts it alphabetically and therefore shows up right above the other total units measures. Okay, so that's step one. Now at this point, our measures are still all over the place. We have some measures for the forecast table. And then if I go to the sales table, we have some more measures. And what maybe is a little bit better is if we take all of the measures and put them in a separate measure table. So to create a measure table is really simple. You just go here to the home tab and then enter data. And you just leave this dialog box here empty. And the only thing that you change is the name. Now over here, the first attempt that I tried was measures. However, this is a reserved name. It doesn't let you use that one. So what you could do instead is to save something like sales measures or metrics, whatever you prefer. So then you click on load. And here on the right hand side, we have now a separate table that is not connected to any of the other tables. We have the name sales measures and basically has one column with just one row. Now, as a next step, we can assign our measures to this table because each measure is stored in what is called a home table. Now, if you go, for example, to FCT sales, take total revenue actuals, and then here on the measure tools, you have here on the left hand side, home table, which currently says FCT sales, but we can also change this now to sales measures. And you see, once you have done this, it shows up in the sales measures table. And now to get rid of this column one, if two options, you can either hide it or you can also delete it. Just delete it only as soon as you have some measures placed in it, otherwise it deletes the table. So let's now also take all of the other measures and place them in our sales measures table. Now let's go to the modeling view and make sure that we see the properties and the fields on the right hand side. And then you can go to your measures, let's say that are stored in the FCT sales table and just select them by holding the shift key. And now we can take our measures and place them in the sales measures table. Just drag and drop them right on top of it. You see, all of our measures now show up over here, except the ones that relate to forecast. So let's repeat this for those as well. So I go to here to my forecast table, select my measures, and then just drag them on top of our sales measures table. Now, if you have a measures table, so meaning a table that has deleted all of the columns that are inside of that table, what you still need to do is go back to the report view and then just hide the fields pane, then open it up again. So now you can see that the icon changed to measures icon and because we only have measures and no columns inside of this table. So the next thing that I want to do is create folders and subfolders to further organize our measures in the measure table. So as a first step, let's now take then all of the actuals measures and put them in one folder. And then we take the forecast measures and put them in a different folder. So here at the top, we have the first actuals measures. Then you can go to your properties pane, general, and here you have the display folder. Now just put in the name that you want to give to this folder. So let's say actuals, you see it creates a folder with all of these measures that I had selected. Now, if you want to add further measures to this folder, you can simply select them and drag them on top of it. So if I go here to total units, actuals, 
then I can just drag them on top of the actual folder and they will be added to that folder. Okay, now let's close that folder and do the same for all of the forecast measures. So I'm gonna select all of the other ones here. And then I go here to display folder and this one I'm gonna call uh, forecast. And you see all of the other measures are now here in my forecast folder. Now there's one that doesn't really belong in here, which is total sales, bigger than forecast, which I use for conditional formatting. So let's place that one into another folder. Just select it and then go to display folder and then type another. Okay, so let's now create further subfolders, for example, for revenue and units. Then you can go to the actual folder select the ones for which you want to create the subfolder. So let's say total revenue. You go again to display folder, type in a backslash, and then the name of that subfolder. So here we want to have one for revenue. You see we have now the revenue subfolder and we do the same for units. So I select all of my total units measures, then go here to display folder, backslash, and then units and the same thing I do for my forecast folder so total revenue forecast select all of your measures go to display folder backslash and then over here we have revenue then we do the same for the units okay so now let's see how that looks like if we are in the report view so I'm gonna go back to my report view and you see we have now a sales measures table with different folders for actuals and then subfolders for revenues, units and the same for forecast, revenue and units and then all of the other KPIs. So you see it's much more organized. Now let's say that we also want to create another folder that only includes our favorite measures that we use all of the time so that we don't have to go through all of the folders and subfolders. Now to do this, you can go back to the modeling view and let's say we want to have total ref actuals in there. So let's take that one as a starting point. And what you do is you go also here to display folder and then you can type in semicolon and the second folder in which you want to show this measure. So here we want to have a favorites folder. So I call this one favorites. And you see that the measure gets now duplicated. So we have it over here, total revenue actuals, and over here, total revenue actuals again. And let's say we want to do the same also for total units actuals. Then I can go over here, again, display folder, semicolon, and I'm gonna call this one as well, favorites. And you see it gets added to the favorites folder. Okay, so if I'm in the report view, and I close all of the folders. Then now I can go here to favorites where I only see those measures that I use a lot. One thing still bothers me and that is that the favorites folder shows up somewhere in the middle because everything is always sorted in alphabetical order. Now what you can do is put a dot in front of favorites so that it always shows at the top. However, still I think that looks kind of ugly. So instead of that, I always number my folders. So let's do this. I'm gonna go back to my modeling view and favorites is gonna be my number one folder. So let's right click, rename, and then put a one in front of it. Then we're gonna have our actuals folder. So that's gonna be number two. And then we're gonna have also a forecast folder. Number three. So you see in the report view, everything now shows nicely in the order that I wanted to show. So first favorites, then actuals, and then forecast. So this is how I keep my measures organized in Power BI. Maybe you have some more tips, then share it in the comment section below. If you like this video and want to learn more about Power BI, consider subscribing to this channel and give us the thumbs up. See you in the next video.